This video will demonstrate how to install a hoop onto a wall. When preparing for a wall mount installation, please consult with a structural engineer or architect to ensure that the wall can accommodate the excess load prior to installation. Tools required. These are the tools needed to mount your hoop to a wall. Additional tools may be needed based on the wall type. You will need a 12 foot ladder or a multi-use ladder, a scissor lift or scaffolding, a material lift, tape measure, plumb bobber laser level, a stud finder, a one foot level and a four foot level, electric drill, drill bits, wrenches, ratchet wrenches, utility knife, a hammer, painter's tape, angle grinder with cutting wheel, metal file, a broom, shop vac, ratchet straps, and a torque wrench. Marking and measuring the wall. Using a stud finder, locate the studs and tape off for easy reference. This is only used if it is a studded wall. Concrete wall installations are totally open to preference of drill location. Determining the type of studs. Drill a pilot hole to find out what type of studs are behind the wall. Once the studs have been determined, locate the center point to where you want the hoop to be installed. Place tape and a center line for easy reference. Marking off the wall for wall boards. Locate the height of the first wall board and mark it on the wall. The bottom of the first wall board should be placed at 113 inches and 1 8. The height marked is at the bottom of the first board. Marking the wall boards. Place tape on center points of each board and mark it with the marker. Since the studs are every 16 inches or 24 inches, mark the boards in reference to each stud. Marking stud locations. Place tape on the wall boards that line up with the wall studs, then mark them for the drill holes. Drilling mounting holes. Mark off four holes that coincide with the stud markings, but parallel to the pre-drilled holes. Then you will need to drill four holes into the board. Marking the drill holes. Hold the board to the wall, making sure that the center line is lined up with the one marked on the wall. Place a marker into the holes so that they are visible once the board is removed. Make sure you use a level to ensure that the wall board is level. Drilling into the wall. Drill a hole into the wall and the stud. The drill bit size should be determined on which hardware is being used on the specific wall type. Mounting lower wall board. Place the mounting hardware through the wall boards. Before tightening, make sure it is level, centered with the center line, and the bottom of the lower board is set at 113 and 1 8 of an inch. Drilling mounting holes. Mark off four holes that coincide with the stud markings, but parallel to the pre-drilled holes. Marking and drilling holes. Hold the board to the wall, making sure that the center line is lined up with the center mark on the wall. Place a marker into the holes and mark so that they are visible once the board is removed. Then drill the holes into the wall and studs. Mounting the middle board. Place the mounting hardware through the board and mount to the wall. Before tightening, make sure it is level and centered with the center line. Drilling mounting holes. If one of the studs line up with one of the hardware holes, use this hole for the mounting hardware. This will replace the hardware for the bracket. Determining the height of the top wall board. When determining the height of the wall board, please reference the manual for exact height placement. The height will be determined by the overhang of the backboard from the wall. Place the top wall board and hardware through to the studs. Once you have determined that the board is level and centered, tighten the mounting hardware. The top board should be the most secured as this board holds a majority of the weight. You may have to use additional hardware. All three wall boards mounted. Now that all the three wall boards have been mounted, it should look like this. Attaching the chain and quick links. Attach quick links to each bracket on the upper wall boards. Once in, connect the chain and tighten with pliers on both sides. You will need to cut the chains in half with bolt cutters or an angle grinder to make two separate equal length chains. Tighten the chain brackets. Tighten all the nuts that hold on the chain brackets. Make sure the quick links are tightened as well. Adjusting the turnbuckles. 
A turnbuckle allows contingency during the adjustment to the length of the sling. By turning the middle portion, it allows both threads to tighten or loosen at the same time. This is how the turnbuckle, chain, and quick link connect. Installing the extension arms. Lay out the spacers, nuts, and bolts. Insert the arms into the brackets and line up the holes. Take one bolt, then a spacer, push through the hole of the extension arm, then place another spacer and a nut. Do not fully tighten at this step. The spacers will be a tight fit, but once the nuts are tightened, they will squeeze into place. Installing the backboard mounting hardware to the extension arms. Place the mounts onto the arms with the same hardware as previous step. Make sure the mounts are straight. If they are not, loosen the set screw and adjust accordingly. Connecting the turnbuckle to the mounting bracket. This is how you attach the turnbuckles to the chain. Attach the other end of the chain to the backboard mounting bracket. When doing this, place a level on the extension arm and attach the turnbuckle to the appropriate link. Make sure the arm is relatively level. It does not need to be level at this time as you will make proper adjustments later. This step is to get rid of any excess slack in the chain. It is very important you tighten all quick links at this step. Attaching the lower extension arm. Place the lower extension arm onto the wall board. Place the nuts, but do not tighten all the way. Once all the arms are in place onto the wall boards, it should look like this. Attaching the mounting plate. Place the mounting plate on the lower extension arm with four carriage bolts. On the other side, finger tighten the nuts, but do not fully tighten just yet. Lifting backboard tube mounting brackets. This step requires multiple people and a material lift. If using a scissor lift, please make sure you have the proper assistance. For our material lift, we have constructed a platform to properly secure the backboard safely with ratchet straps. This will hold the unit in place when lifting it up to 10 feet. The top extension arms will be placed onto the top cut out of the backboard. Once inserted, place nuts onto the three bolts and tighten. Do this to both sides and it should look like this. Attaching the rim. While the backboard is still on the lift, you will want to attach the rim. Doing so now will be a bit easier than when the lower extension arm is set into place. This step does require two people. One person from the front holding the rim and inserting the carriage bolts, and the other person placing the washers and nuts from the backside. When the rim is level, properly secure the nuts from the backside and tighten. Attaching the lower extension arm to the backboard. Slide the extension arm out towards the rear of the backboard. Make sure that the set screw is loosened to make the telescopic arm slide easier. The carriage bolt set should have the nut side towards the wall. Take the lower extension arm and insert it into the base of the backboard just behind the rim. Insert the carriage bolts and push up into the mounting plate. Once the mounting plate is sitting comfortably up into the holes, tighten the four nuts. Tighten the nuts to the mounting plate as well. Leveling the backboard. Place a tape measure on the front of the rim to determine the height of the backboard. If the height is off a little bit, you can tighten the turnbuckles to lift the backboard up. Using a level, make sure the backboard is level from front to back as well as side to side. Once you've determined it is level, then tighten the set screw on the lower extension arm. Assembling the rim cover. Place the rim cover on the underside of the rim. Insert the two machine screws, one on each side, and tighten. Securing the extension arms. Once you have finally got the hoop level and the rim is set to 10 feet, you will need to drill holes into all three extension arms. This will secure the hoop into place. Once all the holes are drilled, place the bolts and nuts into all three holes and tighten. Installing the cross bracing. This step will stabilize the unit from moving side to side. Install the hardware onto the upper extension arms. If the cross bracing is too long, you will need to cut to fit accordingly. Once done, it should look like this. Plug in the power. Plug the power cord into the backboard. Plug the cord into the wall and make sure the unit turns on. 
Now that your hoop is complete, download the app and sync the hoop to play games, stream videos, and compete with others all around the world.